talking to you guys about the DJI Mini 3 Pro. This thing is a complete beast. It's an absolute game changer of a drone. It's lightweight, it's portable, it's powerful, and it is perfect for content creators on all platforms because not only does it shoot horizontally, but there's finally a vertical shooting option, which I know creators, especially on Instagram and TikTok, are super excited for. And look at how small it is. This is the drone, the DJI Mini 3. This is the old one we used to use. Compared to this, this is the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. Just look at the size difference of these two. This is what they look like folded up. And the best part about it is the Mini 3 is actually under 249 grams. So it's not over the weight limit. If I was to fly the Mavic Pro 2 anywhere, you need a drone license. You need a part 107 if you're going to do any commercial work with it. With the nice thing about the Mini 3 is you can fly it almost in every country without a drone license or anything. You can just go out and start flying. This is a great beginner drone. If you guys have never owned a drone before, this is a fantastic option to start getting experience flying and shooting. So three years ago, back in 2019, the DJI Mini version one was actually my first drone ever. I was super nervous to buy one, but when they came out with the 249 grams and I didn't need a license, that's when I initially bought one. I'm super excited about this drone and we've been testing out for the past month and a half and we're excited to show you some of the stuff we've been working on. So like Steven said, we've been testing this out for the past month and a half. So we've had lots and lots of use and abuse on this thing and really impressed with the battery life. There's two different batteries. So there's one battery, it's called the lightweight battery and that one is gonna keep the drone under 249 grams and then there's the heavier battery. The lighter battery has a flight time of 34 minutes, and then they have a heavyweight battery, which is gonna give you a 47 minute flight time. You almost could get bored if you're just doing circles <laughs> around yourself for 47 minutes. So with that, we'll be, we were able to shoot for an entire day with the Fly More kit from sunrise until sunset, basically flying at every single location we went to. Another thing that we love about it is all the statistics. So it has a one and one thirds image sensor, which is fantastic. Another thing that we love about it is that it has a 48 megapixel camera. My Canon R5 that we're shooting on right now literally has a 45 megapixel camera. So that blows our mind and the images look absolutely insane when we've been flying it and the last thing that we love about it is that it's 4k 60 frames per second if you shoot at 1080p you're gonna get 120 frames per second for that nice buttery smooth slow motion the sensor in this is also absolutely insane at night we were flying flying during blue hour midday at night and it handles it really well because of the new hdr mode so when you're shooting the video it handles the iso it doesn't get too grainy but it still gives you enough light to where you can see everything at night my favorite thing about it is the new true vertical shooting mode and this has been an absolute game changer you can shoot your content for youtube immediately switch it into vertical shooting mode and get all that content for tiktok and instagram no problem there's no more cropping in that was always the biggest pain point for us when transitioning our footage over to those vertical based platforms so it's really nice everything in terms of the quality is perfection the mini 3 pro also has tri-directional obstacle avoidance so before I think I crashed my first mini like eight times because there was no obstacle avoidance except below when you were landing. This one has it in front, behind, and on the bottom, so it really helps when you're flying it around. We were flying it through some different caves. We were flying it through a lot of trees when we were on our road trip, and it handled everything fantastic. It also has a much higher wind resistance compared to some of their previous drones, which was really nice because we get met with a lot of unfavorable conditions when we're out shooting. It's just a matter of adventure photography and videography, so we did put it up in the wind quite a bit and it handled it really really well the one downside about the mini 3 is the price is definitely a little bit more expensive than the old minis it runs around 749 entry price for a thousand dollars more you can basically get the mavic 3 our favorite part of this is it's just so compact i can stick it in a pocket bring it with us on a hike it is not taking up a lot of room in my camera bag it's at all. literally smaller than his phone like for size reference <laughs> so it it's the ideal drone for travel photography especially if you're flying a lot uh and need you know some extra space in your bag this is super easy to just throw it in there and take with you thank you so much to dji for sponsoring today's video this is literally a dream partnership for us so now we're going to take you through our go-to location scouting process for any time we script out a cinematic drone footage, B-roll kind of video, uh, exactly what we look for in terms of the landscapes and whatnot and how you guys can implement that yourselves.
we decided to take our DJI Mini 3 Pro on a road trip, one of our favorite road trips. It's just cruising straight up Highway 395, and we were on that for literally eight hours. And throughout that, we had to decide where we wanted to stop. So we tried to focus on things that we can fly around, like if it's a pinnacle or if there's some type, maybe it's the car and we're standing on top of it, anything that we can fly around. Another thing that we looked for is anything that we can fly through. So if we saw a cool valley, if we saw maybe a tent or an arch that we could fly through, something to really pull the viewer in another thing that we loved is just a simple top-down view that's the one nice thing about a drone if I shooting a regular picture or shooting a regular video it's okay but as soon as you throw the drone up and you get that top-down bird's eye view completely immerses you into what it would look like because that's not what the normal human eye is going to see when you're walking around and the last thing that we look for is natural leading lines, whether it's in form of river, roads, something that naturally draws the viewer's eyes into your story. While we were on the road trip, we made sure that we got 10 of our favorite drone shots we try and hit on every single trip. Number one is, like I was just saying, is the bird's eye view. At every single location, I like to throw it up, get at least one top-down shot. That way we always have something to go back to that really shows the environment that we're in. Number two is the reveal shot. So basically, we start by having the camera positioning down on some sort of element where you cannot see above the horizon line, and you'll slowly pan up and reveal what whatever is in the frame, whether it's an epic landscape, a person doing some cool epic activity. It just leaves your viewer wanting to see more. Another shot that we like to do is just a simple circle shot. This always looks cool, especially if we're standing on top of a car, for instance, because the foreground and the background are moving at two different speeds. So it creates this really interesting element that draws the viewer in and anticipates the next shot. Next up, we have a tracking shot. This one, your subject is going to be moving and your drone is going to be following it. It adds a lot of movement and it's a really good shot to transition one part of your video to the next. Next one is basically just exploding up. We call it like a rocket. So you're not gonna pan the drone at all. You're just gonna fly it up as high as you can. It's a great way to show off the landscape or let's say there's some trees and I fly directly over the trees. It's gonna reveal a different cove. So our reveal shot, much more of a pan. This one is just straight flying the dro drone up to as high as you can get it. Next up, we have your fly through shot. And this is what really gets your audience really immersed in your scenery and your landscape. You're taking them through those objects like we've mentioned earlier, like the tents, the caves, the arches, and you're really bringing your audience along for the ride. Next up is just leaving the drone there almost like as a tripod in the sky and coming into frame. We love doing this if it's a driving shot, just gonna show that you're leaving one place and going into the next one. We also have the fly over. This is a really cool shot, especially if you have some sort of activity happening in your frame, whether it's somebody walking, your drone is going to overtake your subject and really position your subject in the surrounding environment. Most people think when you're flying a drone, you wanna be up as high as you can to try and see the bird's eye view, but it's actually really cool if you come down low and you have the drone flying right above. I like to stay between one meter to two meters or three feet up to six feet right above the floor because you get a much faster feeling. If we're at the beginning of a video, usually I'll have it pretty high so you can kind of take in the view, but as soon as we have a drop in the music or we wanna start pacing up the video, I'll bring the drone down and add in a really fast low shot to try and build some drama. Another shot that we love for transitioning from one point to the next is usually with the cars or with a person. You're basically gonna fly the drone at the moving subject and then you're gonna pull it apart. So let's say your car's coming this way, drone is flying this way. As soon as they hit each other, you're gonna cut it and you're gonna flip it. And it looks like you just passed from one scene into the next. It's a great dynamic shot that's not too hard to control. And the closing shot that we love to add, especially when we're trying to tell a story through drone footage, is one pan out of the entire scene. So once you show your close shots, you show a couple different transitions, you circle, you have a low shot, you're gonna pan out, and that's kind of the end of your story to show this is where it all took place, or this is the crazy spot that we ended up after we went on this adventure, and that's usually how we finish any of our B-roll sections on our videos. Overall, we love the Mini 3 Pro, mostly because it's so small, but it actually packs a punch with everything, whether it was photos, whether it was shooting horizontally or vertically, 
for us because we create most of our content on Instagram and TikTok, we absolutely love the vertical shooting mode. We think this is gonna completely change the game. If you guys do wanna purchase the new DJI Mini 3 Pro, we would love for you guys to use our link in the description below. It supports our channel and helps us out a lot. Thanks again to DJI for sponsoring this video. If you wanna go see some more tips or what the actual vertical shooting mode is, make sure you go to our Instagram or our TikTok. We'll be posting a bunch of the fun vertical clips and photos on there as well. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and notification bell for more videos on photography, videography, adventure tips, travel guides, and more.